Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, I'm going to talk about my plant haul that I have here. You can see that I have my all these plants. I've got my work cut out for me this weekend. I went to several different nurseries to get some of these plants. Actually, I went to two. Of course, I went to Creekside Nursery, which is my beloved nursery that I love. I know that I can always go to Creekside Nursery and get all my proven winners there. So I love that nursery. And then I also went to another nursery on the way back from Creekside just to check it out because it's been a while since I've been there. And I was helping my friend Donna across the street help design her new garden that she's about ready to do. And I'm going to video that as well. So anyways, we stopped in there and just to see what kind of plants they have. And that's one good thing about stopping in different, different nurseries. You never know what they're going to have. You can always help someone design a garden, but you never know like what plants you can actually get. So by stopping at different nurseries, you know that one nursery might carry a different plant and this nursery might carry another one and the other one might not be able to get it and they have it. So it's always a good idea to um, go to different nurseries and pick out some different stuff and get unique things that not everybody has as well. So right here in front of me, I've been wanting to get my hands on this Punkster Blue Dwarf Butterfly Bush. So it's not in bloom yet. I bought five of these, but it's about ready to bud out show you so I've got some buds on there do you see them like right here about ready to bud out so this is more of a summer spring bloomer but they are a powerhouse so once they start blooming they are not going to stop until a frost which is what I love about that because there's not much perennials or shrubs that will like just give you like a short window of blooms but this one once it starts blooming, we'll give you blooms all the way until frost. Pretty excited about that. And I love this color. It's called Punkster Blue. And inside the teeny tiny flowers, and I'll throw a picture up there for you, it has little orange right in the middle. It has a hardiness of five to nine. It only gets two feet tall and wide. It takes full sun. And that's the only thing that I'm worried about you guys is that I'm putting it on the west side over there and we share two sides from house to house so that gives me some shade but now in the summertime the sun is more right on top so I get more sun in the summertime and when I was reading this this said it required eight hours of sun and it's not going to get eight hours of sun so we'll see how it does but I'm going to try to put it in the sunniest spot over there as well so it's a petite shrub, but it packs a punch. So it has really, really big, big flowers on a really small plant. So that is really the reason why I really loved this about this plant. And even in some areas, this may stay as an evergreen in some areas as well. So let me read the characteristics about it. True blue flowers cover this short, stocky shrub all summer long. Punkster Blue Butterfly Bush is a sun-loving plant that provides lots of color and fragrance with no need to deadhead. But, you know, I do deadhead. It's in my mind. I'm bad about that. Well, not bad about that. It's just, I just want it to rebloom more. But this says that there is no need to, which is pretty cool. Now, this plant right here does not like wet, soggy areas. So actually, when I was reading on the website, and I'm glad that I did that because I wouldn't have known because it does not tell me this. It says well-drained soil. So online, it said for clay soil to put it about two inches above and then mound it up. That way it, it will drain really well. This plant does not like wet feet whatsoever. And I also read several times, and I'm glad that I also read it again because I forgot that it does not like mulch right up against it. So once this plant is established, it is drought tolerant. It does attract pollinators, especially butterflies and bees, and it resists deer. For some reason, deer don't like this texture of the leaf. Oh, another thing that I read on the website too was never to amend the soil. So I'll take that into consideration too. So usually I throw a little bit of compost into my soil, but for this one, I'm just gonna put some biotone and I will not amend my hole whatsoever on this plant. So also on their website, I was reading that this plant has what they call a theory about a second story plant. So if you do not prune your butterfly bushes, then you will not get 
flowers lower down. You will only see them, what they said from the second story, is if you look down on your second story and look down, then you'll see these flowers. So that's another good reason to be able to prune these bushes because you want blooms down low here as well, and you don't want to have to be on a step stool to see your blooms because they're so pretty. So the next plant I'm going to talk about, and I'm super excited because it's brand new on the market, is called Summerific Lilac Crush. It is a perennial and it is a hardy hibiscus. So this is not that same type of plant that you buy at Home Depot and there are all those tropical flowers that have the hardiness zone of say 10 to 11. So these are hardy in our area and they actually have a hardiness zone of 4 to 9. So anybody that is in the cold can grow this type plant and have it as a perennial and be able to enjoy this plant for many, many years. So this is also from Proven Winners, as you can see. Now this is gonna be one of my main focal points over in that West Garden. So I have two really tall uh, hydrangea limelight standard forms over there. So that's gonna give me my creamy lime color with great big panicle blooms. And then this, it's gonna look gorgeous against my hardy board. This dark gray hardy board I have here, that lilac big bloom is gonna look gorgeous against that. Now this plant will get taller than me, so it'll get five to six feet tall. So like I said, this is gonna be one of my big focal points over on that side. So in the very middle, I've got three of these and I'll plant them in like a pyramid arrangement. And then underneath of that is I was planning on putting those butterfly bushes. So I need to get them over there and arrange them and see how well they're gonna do for me. But I'm pretty, really excited about this plant. This is a bog plant. So if you have really, really wet area, you can plant this and it loves water. Actually, Jenny from Creekside came over here and delivered a unique stone piece for me. And in the very front, I have another summerific, I think it was called Berry Awesome in the front and she's like, oh my gosh, like how did that plant get so big? And I'm like, I don't know, it gets a lot of water. And she's like, there you go. So she knows now, and she didn't realize before that these hardy hibiscus like a lot of water. So I have that area over there on drip, so I'll probably add extra drip to these since I know that they do like a lot of water. So these flowers are gonna be lavender, even though it's called lilac, lavender blue flowers and they'll have a great big bloom on them. They'll have a great big bloom on them, about seven to eight inches wide, and they do fall off. They only bloom for one day, but they have so many buds on them that it doesn't really matter if these fall off. The only thing that you have to kind of deal with is picking up those dead blooms that fall off, but it's not really that big a deal for me when you like love something that's so pretty and will give you so much color like this hardy hibiscus will. So this plant has an upright habit and it is very, very sturdy, so it won't droop on you at all. It has a lot of fall interest. It attracts hummingbirds. Yeah. It resists deer, so deer don't like this plant as well. So if you're looking for any type of plant that deer don't like, they don't like this hardy hibiscus and they do not like that butterfly bush. Okay, the next two plants that I'm gonna talk about are new on the market this year, and they are coneflowers. And Jenny trialed these last year in her trial garden, and I went over there and filmed last year, and I'll throw that video up somewhere, like in probably the, the description, to show you where we trialed these. I fell in love with this plant, like, right away. The blooms on the coneflowers were like that big. I have never seen a coneflower that had a bloom that big. And it was just like a double big puff and the petals just kind of like draped down. It was so pretty guys. So it's not blooming yet, but let me show you this picture right here. Like look how pretty that is. It's just so, so pretty. Love it. So. I bought two. I bought the raspberry beret and I bought the double coated butter pecan. Like, oh, it is so pretty, you guys. Like, I was so glad to get my hands on these. Super, super glad. 
So the double coated raspberry beret takes full sun to part sun. It gets 18 to 20 inches tall and it is a perennial and it is considered an echinacea. So let me read the feature on this one for you. Full, fully doubled intense raspberry pink flowers, four inch wide with ray petals to match. Prolific flower production, seated atop dense rosettes of foliage, broad horizontal ray petals maximize flower size. Grow in sunny and hot locations with well-drained soil, tolerates light shade, but best performs in full sun. It is drought tolerant once it's established and it pairs good with Coreopsis, Daylilies, Salvia, Chasta Daisies, and Delphinium. Another plant that I'm gonna share with you today that I bought from Creekside is called Scentlandia. And it's called Scentlandia because it is a sweet spire and this is the most fragrant and best fragrance of, out of all the sweet spires that are out there. So I'm really, really excited about this and it's already starting to have some blooms on it. Can you see that right there? So this is another long blooming that blooms in their summertime. But you guys, this was a mistake plant for me. My friend Dawn across the street, she is gonna start some of her new landscape. She wants a little bit of privacy because she's on the corner. And I'm gonna share that video with you. But she wanted this plant and I didn't really know anything about this plant except that it, you know, I knew that it's got these real cute frilly looking flowers on there because I have said that I do like that flower and I would like to have that shrub at some point. But I really wasn't planning on buying this plant and I really didn't buy it. But let me tell you. So I told Jerry at Creekside that I needed three of these. So he went to the shrub lot and brought three back and I was getting some plants for another neighbor down the street. So I don't know why I told her three, told Jerry three, but Dawn bought three and loaded, loaded them up into her car because she had three other shrubs as well. And when we were telling my friend Loretta that she bought, I was like, Dawn, you've got three of these and you only need two. So I don't know if I subconsciously needed this plant or if God told me that I needed this plant, but then she was telling Loretta about the fall foliage. So you guys, look at that fall foliage. Like as soon as I saw that, I'm like, I'll buy that from you. Like, I love that. So I really wasn't planning on buying this plant, but I am so glad that I got my hands on this plant. Thank you, Don. Sweet Landa Sweet Spire offers the complete package. Glossy foliage, fragrant summer flowers, and exceptional fall color. This compact variety is very shade tolerant. So that's another good thing too. I'm only gonna have one of these, even though like I say the power of three, but I'm just happy that I'm gonna have some of that fall foliage into the um, fall on this plant, all this gorgeous orange and red color. But anyways, I can plant this closer to the house. It's gonna get a little bit more shade versus this dwarf butterfly bush that needs eight hours of sun. So that's probably where I'll put that plant is kind of a little bit closer to the house. So it grows two to three feet tall. It is hardy in zones five to nine. I am zone eight, Charlotte, North Carolina, and it can be in the sun or part shade. It is a native plant, which is good. It's fragrant. It has fall color and it is compact. So this is another bog plant too. So this plant will take a lot of water as well as that hardy hibiscus. So if you have any kind of really wet area and you don't know what to put there because things keep dying, you could put this sweet spire, you can put a hardy hibiscus, and also, Jenny told me you could put a button bush. And I have a button bush growing at the very end of this skinny side garden, and I'll show a little picture of that as well. So while I was at New Hope Nursery, I bought another different kind of echinacea and this is called Color Coated One in a Melon. So this one gets a little bit taller than the other two. This gets 24 to 26 inches tall. The other get 20 inches tall. It is another Echinacea and it is a perennial and it has a melon yellowishy orange color right there. So its feature is five to five and a half melon colored flowers 
have matching melon cones. Petals are held horizontally and overlap. Leave the flowers intact into winter and watch the bird comes to eat. Grow in a sunny and hot location with well-drained soil, tolerates light shade, best performance in full sun. It is drought tolerant once established and it pairs good with Coreopsis, Daphinium, Daylilies, Chasta Daisies, and Salvia, the exact same as the other one. So I'm really excited. I have three different types of coneflowers that I'm gonna plant over in that west side garden. And like I said, the reason why I'm planting over there is because that hill was trying to erode. So the more plants that I put in that area, the better off that I'm gonna be and the less that that hill will erode as soon as I get more roots in there. So I'm just gonna plant it up. Okay, now that I talked about all these plants, I'm gonna grab these plants and take them over to the west side and arrange them. I will plant one up with you because you don't need to see me plant up 12 different plants. I'll plant one up and show you, and then at the very end, I'll go back and do a quick little tour of that west side garden. And I also um, am going to have another video about drip. I was able to put drip over there, but I haven't been able to talk about it because we have got rain. For the last three days, I think we've probably had about six to, I don't know, seven inches of rain. So the last several days, we just haven't been able to do anything. But one good thing is that I've been able to go to the nurseries and able to grab all these plants up. So this is a view of the newly planted flower bed. I call this my west side garden because it's facing the west part of the house. So quite a big difference in the last two months, huh? I'll show where we started and now where we're at today in the first part of May. You can see the limelight standards are really pretty I got two of those, one here and one on the other end. I planted lots of colorful annuals that I think we're gonna look really good this year. Right here, I have my newly planted David Austin rose. I bought four of those, but two are looking really good. And then two are on the major struggle bus. So I do have a five year warranty on these David Austin roses since I bought them online. So I'm gonna have to use my warranty on those. And then right here growing up the obelisk, it, this little bumblebee caught my attention. But climbing up the obelisk is gonna be these two potato vines that are supposed to get 70 feet tall. And this is a seven foot obelisk so that should by the end of the summer be as tall as that and as it starts growing I'll train it up the obelisk 
So you can see that I have added drip here and I'll do another video going over that drip, but I still wanted to show you guys how I put my drip in. This is the Bubblegum Super Petunia Vista, Limelight Coleus, and this is the Luscious Royal Lantana. It's gonna have that hot pink, orange, and yellow. The cone flowers that I just planted from Proven Winners. Yellow Lantana. This cone flower is about ready to bud out a little bit. And I have bubble gum, I think six or seven bubble gums that are gonna be in this side garden. They're gonna be so pretty by the end of the summer. And I have the Lime Time Coleus that takes full sun. During my plant tall, I talked about these three lilac crush hibiscus right there. So those, I planted one up with you, and then there's the other three that are planted up. And then also in the video, I talked about my five butterfly bushes that were the punkster blue, where I talked about it had a big, huge flower on them on a big, on a tiny plant. So I've got five of those that are surrounding my lilac crush. So I've got one there, two, three, four, and five. So that is gonna be my centerpiece in this West Garden right there. So I wanted to have my limelight hydrangeas, which are gonna be gorgeous when they start to bloom. They should start blooming all at the same time. So that, Limelight there with all those lime panicle hydrangeas is going to be really pretty with these lilac hardy hibiscus and then the blue butterfly bushes. So I think that is going to make a great display. And then here's the other limelight hydrangea also. So these limelight panicle hydrangeas from Proven Winners do take full sun. I do add drip because I'm zone eight. There was the Amsonia that I planted earlier in the springtime. And then I have the Russian sage that's around this obelisk as well. You can see that it's starting to bud out there. So this is a different variety and I'll throw the name up on the screen. So I really didn't talk about this plant yet, but I'm hoping that this variety of Russian sage will do better than the denim and lace. The denim and lace has not died in my garden, but it has not thrived for whatever reason. So that one does really well for Laura with Garden Answer, but has not done well for me. When I hear her talk about it and see it in her videos, I really wanted that plant, but like I said, tried it and it didn't do well in my garden. It just didn't thrive. So I'm really excited about these butterfly bushes. This is my first punkster series that I have planted. And then I planted two of the mountain hydrangeas in this garden. Here's one of them. No, actually I did three. Cause you know, I talk about the power of three. So it looks like it's gonna be more of a light pink color instead of a blue. This is gonna be more like a lace cap. I think that's so pretty. And then I moved my yin and yang from the very front part of the garden to the side garden to give it more space, more open space and more structure in the very front. So they're doing really good. And then that's an azalea. That's an encore azalea. Let's see, more cone flowers here. And then around this blue, punkster blue, butterfly bush, I planted these one in a melon. So they're gonna be more of a orangey tangerine color, which I thought would be really good color paired with this punkster blue. So I'm really excited when they bloom out and see what they're gonna look like. I do have several hardy hibiscus. They do really good here in my area. The one in the front thrives like crazy. They do like a lot of water and they're a bog plant. Like I said in the beginning of my video, there is two more of the hydrangeas that are the, I think they're tiny, tough stuff. I'll throw the name up as well. 
Still have a little bit of the dianthesis hanging on. I could probably shear those back and see if they'll bloom back again for me. And then look at this luscious lantana. Such a pretty, pretty bloom as well. These did so good for me and they will probably come back again. And I will leave these in as well as the bubble gum. So you can see that I have three layers of drip one, two, three, and I have not covered this drip up yet because I'm going to do a video of that where I go more in detail and how you can add the one fourth drip to some of these plants that like a lot of water. So I'm going to do that in my next video coming up. So look for that. The other plant that I talked about in my video is this scent landa, and this is the sweet spire, and it is the most sweet smelling of all so i'm really excited about that they're just starting to bloom out they haven't really started coming out yet this one was kind of yellow when i planted it it was really ready to get out of the pot it was a little bit root bound so we got it out of the pot and it looks great there's the bloom on the luscious royal lantana all these are from Proven Winners, as well as the bubble gum. I also have several of the salvia that I planted called Rockin' Playing the Blues, and this is gonna to get to 48 inches, so I planted that more deep, more towards the back of the garden because they're gonna be tall, a lot taller than these plants right here. And this rose loves the space right here like I mean loves it so I need to tie this one up to the trellis let me get a little closer here so I can show you the really really pretty they're a smaller bloom as you can see but look how pretty the detail very many many petals in there I'd say probably 80 to 100 petals you can see the bee is loving that one right there in this rose bush, I wish you could smell it. It smells divine. It has a great scent to it right now. I do need to come in and deadhead some of these blooms right here with my pruners. So when a whole cluster is finished, you can actually go back and take the whole cluster back to where you see five leaves. So I would probably prune this one back to about right here. And then I have this trellis. There's three of those that are tied together right there. And I just feel like since this is a really long wall on the side of the house, it just makes a great impact. I would probably love, I got a few little trellises down there, but I haven't done with anything with them. Those were the very first trellises that I tried to do with this one and it was just not getting it. It was, got lost. So I had to do something a little bit more bulky there, but I really do like these trellises. They came from Lowe's. And like I said, I put three of them together and it works really, really well for this area. And then more cone flowers. I'm super excited because these are the brand new double coated raspberry beret. No blooms on it yet. And then the butter pecan the blooms on these are so so big i'm really excited about seeing what they're going to do in my garden this year i feel like cone flowers like at the very end of the season when everything else looks tired they're still really pretty doing great in the garden i just had one of those a bless there that put into the garden just to give it some interest and then that's the pink truffula pink gumfrina and then some more of my petunias that I carried from the very front of the garden. So I was able to paint a canvas with plants on this side garden. And I think I'm gonna love that picture and the outcome when they start to fully bloom. So these are all the super petunias from Proven Winners that I put into the ground about maybe three weeks ago, I'm gonna say. So I've been giving them some feed every week because they're heavy feeders with that proven winners water soluble hardy hibiscus that's been in the ground for three years 
love this annual combination. It's a new plant from Proven Winners. I wish I got my hands on more of those. That's a mini Vista Super Petunia with the Gumfrina. And then I carried the same petunias over onto this side right here. And then look at the side garden now. So I hope this video was helpful and I hope it gave you some inspiration to get out and plant. I love this west side of the garden now and I'm excited to fill it up. I don't want to see any mulch in the very beginning because remember, I'm trying to keep this hill from eroding. So the more plants that I have in here, the less I have to mulch and the less I have to weed as well. So remember, one plant brings you, one plant will bring you a little well-being, five plants brings you 60% well-being, and 10, 10 plants will bring you maximize well-being. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.